بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد so in shara we'll continue from where we left off uh, last week and we complete the first uh, lesson and uh, it took us a few lessons to actually complete that because you can see there's many pages for each lesson and that's what's actually completed in the actual Arabic lesson or the lesson that's delivered in Arabic. So inshallah we'll obviously go through as much as we can uh, in the space of roughly 30 to 45 minutes inshallah and progress like that until we finish the book inshallah. So we're on the second lesson now and uh, the Sheikh he begins the lesson and he says he says قال شيخ الإسلام محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى في رسالته نواقض الإسلام قال في الناقض الأول الأول الشرك في عبادة الله تعالى قال الله تعالى إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك أن يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء فقال إنه من يشرك بالله فقد حرم الله عليه الجنة ومأواه so then the Shaykh he starts off and he quotes the original author of this book that we are reading, the Waqid al-Islam, the Nullifiers of Islam, and that's Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab. May Allah have mercy upon him. And the Shaykh he mentions that in the first Nullifier, which was discussed in the first lesson as well, and he quotes the uh, author directly, he says, a shirk. So the first Nullifier, a shirk. And uh, associating partners in worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he brings two evidences from the Quran, the speech of Allah. And the first one is from Surah An Nisa, verse 48. So if we go there and have a look at the meaning of the translation, uh, give me a second. So Surah Al Baqarah, verse 48. Let's have a look. So basically, where Allah says, indeed, verily Allah does not forgive uh, that uh, partners are associated, him, uh, associated with him in worship. However, he forgives other than that to who he wills. That's the meaning of the ayah. So basically, that Allah does not forgive that shirk be committed. Yeah, so that you associate partners in worship with him. But for any other sin... He will he he can forgive it if he wants to. And then the next ayah that we read that's from Surah Al Maida, <clears throat> uh, Surah Al Maida, verse seventy two. So we can have a look at that as well. Verse seventy two. And the rough meaning of that is, verily, whosoever sets up partners in worship with Allah, then Allah has forbidden paradise for him. And the fire will be his abode. And for the Dali moon, polytheists and wrongdoers, there are no helpers. So from that, the Sheikh is made clear to us the the gravity and the brevity of, of shirk, committing shirk and the conclusion of that. That is the biggest crime that you can commit. Against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Shaykh he says, وَمِنْهُ الظَّبْحُ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ كَمَنْ يَذْبَحُ لِلْجِنِّ أَوْ لِلْقَبْرِ And just as extra benefit, the original author mentions here, and from uh, and from the types of shirk, are uh, the examples that were given in the previous lesson, but also the Shaykh mentions here, for example, such as um, slaughtering, for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So slaughtering for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, slaughtering animals, for example, for other than Allah, like the one who uh, slaughters for a jinn or on or for a grave. Yeah? As we're well aware of, this happens still. So the Shaykh, he continues, he, he explains, he begins explaining the author's statement above. He says, "Mala fi liqa al ams al kalam ala ahmiyati ma'rifati nawaqid al Islam min ajl al tiqaiha wal hazri minha wa tahdir al nasi 
min an yaqa'u fiha siyanatan lid-din wa hifdan lil-aqidati wa tahqiqan lima khuliqa al-'abdu min ajlihi min tawhid lillah azza wa jal wa ikhlas lid-din lahu tabaraka wa ta'ala wa mada aydan an al-shaykh rahimahullahu ta'ala adda 'ashar nawaqid wa وعرفنا أن هذا ليس على سبيل الحصر وإنما هو بيان لأهم ما ينتقد به الإسلام وأن بقية النواقض في الجملة ترجع إلى هذه النواقض العشرة التي ذكرها رحمه الله تعالى So then in this paragraph the Sheikh he says and, uh, and what transpired Yesterday, and for us, obviously, that was the last few lessons that we've been going over in the last few weeks, uh, according to uh, our schedule. Then, what transpired in the previous lessons and the previous speech are the importances or the importance of knowing the nullifiers of Islam, knowing those things that nullify our religion, in order to why, in order. That we can stay away from them We can avoid the pitfalls And in order that we can warn other people From falling into those mistakes And and, and also in that regard On the flip side We're preserving our religion And we're preserving our deen And we are preserving our belief And we are actualizing And carrying out in reality, what Allah has intended for us, i.e. to worship Him alone upon Tawheed and not associate any partners in worship alongside Him. And you can see all the benefits of knowing this and what and the fruits of that. So then the Shaykh, he continues, he says, with, with, with pureness and sincerity for the deen. And the Shaykh says, also that which has transpired is that the Shaykh, may Allah have mercy upon him, the original author, he gave us a number of these nullifiers. He gave us a number of nullifiers. And he says that we know that this, and we know that this is not, that there's only like 10. For example, if 10, the Shaykh has mentioned 10, it doesn't mean that there are 10. But the Shaykh has mentioned the most gravest of nullifiers of the deen of Islam. He's mentioned the most important ones that we need to know because most of the people fall into these easily. But there are many more. And we'll see, the Shaykh will mention this, inshallah, later on in the lesson. So the Shaykh, he goes on to say, he says, indeed, this is a clarification of the most important of those nullifiers of our Islam. And that the rest of the nullifiers in general, they all return to these 10 nullifiers. So that's good because if we know these 10 nullifiers clearly with the evidences, then we, we will see that the other nullifiers always return to these 10. So these are the head. So these 10 nullifiers are the head of the nullifiers of Islam. So let's carry on what the Sheikh says. Let's see what the Sheikh says. So then the Sheikh, he mentions, Hafidullah, he says, وَبَدَأَ رَحْمَهُ اللَّهِ الْأَوَّلِ من نواقض الإسلام وهو الشرك بالله لأن الشرك أعظم الموبقات وأكبر الكبائر وأعظم المحرمات. So then the Sheikh he says and the original author, author may Allah have mercy upon him, he began with the first nullifier of Islam and that is shirk, as as mentioned last week as well. And why? Because as we know, shirk is the gravest and the most grave and most dangerous and at the head of the the destroyers the seven as we know the seven major destroyers the Sheikh will mention the hadith shortly they said the top shirk destroys you it sends you out of the fold of religion shirk ul akbar as we know sends you away from the fold and out of the fold of the religion and it's, it is the biggest sin that anybody can commit against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so then the Sheikh, he's, he's mentioned some points here. You can see the bullet points. The Sheikh, he goes on to say, أَعْظَمُ الْمَوْبِقَاتِ أَيْ الْمُهْلِكَاتِ وَلِهَذَا بَدَأَ بِهِ عَلَيْهِ صَلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامِ فِي قَوْلِهِ اِجْتَنِبُوا السَّبْعَ الْمَوْبِقَاتِ قَالُوا 
وَمَا هُنَّ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ قَالَ الشِّرْكُ قَالَ الشِّرْكُ بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ ذَكَرَ بَقِيَّةُ الْمَوْبِقَاتِ فَبَدَأَ بِهِ So first point, what does موبِقَات mean? And the shaykh, he says, what does أَعْذَمُ الْمَوْبِقَات mean? He says, مُهْلِكَات i.e. مُهْلِكَات as in destroyers. The seven deadly destroyers. And the shaykh says, this is the reason why the Prophet ﷺ in his speech, in the Sahih Hadith, mentioned, stay away, avoid the seven destroyers. They said, the Sahaba, they said, and what are they, O Messenger of Allah? And he said, Ashirku Billah, and then he carried on explaining the rest. But obviously, our lessons focused on shirk at the moment, so we'll just stop there. But it's a famous Hadith, most of us will know and be aware of the Hadith. So then the shaykh goes on to mention in the second point وَأَكْبُرُ الْكَبَائِرِ كَمَا فِي حَدِيثِ ابْنِ مَسْعُودِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ أَلَا أُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِأَكْبَرِ الْكَبَائِرِ قُلْنَا بَلَا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ قَالَ الْإِشْرَاكُ بِاللَّهِ So then the next point going off of the first one and the, the biggest of the sins is shirk and as we learn from the hadith of ibn Mas'ud رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ where the Prophet ﷺ said, Shall I not inform you of the biggest sin or the gravest sin? And they said, Yes, of course, Ya Rasulullah, inform us. And he said, Al Ishraku Billah, committing shirk, associating partners in worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He began with that. So then we go on and go on where the Shaykh he says, Wa Adam al Muharramat kama fi ayat al Muharramat ayat al Nawahi. قُلْ تَعَالَوْا أَتْلُوا مَا حَرَّمَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ أَنْ لَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا فَبَدَأَ بِالْإِشْرَاكِ بِاللَّهِ And also from the greatest of the Muharramat, as we see in the ayah, uh, in the, uh, the verses of Muhar- uh, Muharramat, or uh, all those things are forbidden, is in this ayah of the Nawahi, this ayah of uh, Nawahi here, where uh, the Shaykh quotes from the Qur'an, from Surah Al-An'am, verse 151, say, you know, to the Christians, to the people of the book, say, come and let me recite a, uh, Let me recite what your Lord has forbidden for you. And then the first thing that's mentioned in terms of those things are forbidden is and do not associate partners with Allah in worship. Allah tushriku bihi shay'a. Don't associate any partners with your Lord. And then it goes on, as is a long ayah, as, as you guys are aware of. Inshallah. So then the Shaykh continues to his next point. He says, وَهُوَ أُظْلِمُ الظُّلْمُ وَهُوَ أَظْلَمُ الظُّلْمُ كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ وَقَالَ جَلَّ وَعَلَى وَالْكَافِرُونَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ So the next point the Shaykh mentions that it is a, it's the greatest of transgressions. It's the greatest of oppressions as Allah Jalla wa'ala said in Surah Al-Luqman, verse 13, in verily, shirk is a great oppression. Is a great oppression. Uh, and also, in the, other, in, in the ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, part of the ayah, 254, where it is said, and the disbelievers, they are the volumoon, the transgressors the oppressors, the transgressors, the ones who commit polytheism. Yeah. <coughs> so then the Shaykh, he continues and he says, وَهُوَ ذَنْبُ الَّذِي لَا يُغْفَرْ كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ And we read the ayah earlier. So the Shaykh is breaking it down for us even further. He says, and it is the sin it is a sin that is not forgiven. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Verily, Allah does not forgive that you commit shirk with Him, that you associate partners in worship with Him. And He goes on to say, وَهُوَ الذَّنْبُ الَّذِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى عَلَى صَاحِبِهِ دُخُولُ الْجَنَّةِ وَقَضَى أَنْ يَكُونَ فِي النَّارِ مُخَلَّدًا فِيهَا أَبَدَ الْأَبَادِ إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةَ وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ وَمَا لِلْظَالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ And that's the ayah that we 
read earlier as well. And the Sheikh, he mentions that the, the sin, whoever commits his sin and dies upon it, i.e. shirk, the greater shirk, then he will, then uh, Jannah, paradise is made haram for him and he will be in the fire, the hell fire, for eternity, for the rest of eternity. And the ayah that we read earlier on from uh, Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 72, that the Shaykh quoted that again for us, as is relevant here. So the Shaykh goes on to say, وَهَذَا ذَنْبُ الْعَظِيمُ وَالْجُرْمُ الْوَخِيمُ مُسَادِمٌ تَمَامُ الْمُسَادِمَةِ وَمُنَافٍ تَمَامُ الْمُنَافَاتِ لِمَا خُلِقَ الْعَبْدِ مِنْ أَجْدِهِ وَوُجِدَ لِتَحْقِيقِهِ وَهُوَ عِبَادَةُ اللَّهِ قال الله عز وجل وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ So then the Shaykh he goes on to say that this crime, this great crime and great sin, and he goes on to say, أَيْ شِرْك it negates, it negates the very purpose. It negates the very purpose that the mankind and jinn were created for. And what is that? As the Sheikh mentioned earlier on in the, at, the, at the start of the lesson, he said to actualize the worship of Allah and the actualize Tawheed, as in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and not associated, associating any partners with him. It negates... If, People committing shirk and negates their very purpose of existence. See, it's a big thing if we think it like that. They're going against the very the purpose of their existence. And the Shaykh quotes an ayah that we're all aware of. I hope uh, from Surah Al Zariyat, verse 56, where Allah says, Jalawala, I did not create uh, jinn, I did not create the jinn and mankind, but to worship me. And that confirms what the Sheikh has mentioned as evidence. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ وَقَالَ جَلَّ وَعَلَى أَلَا لِلَّهِ الدِّينِ الْخَالِسِ أَلَا لِلَّهِ الدِّينُ الْخَالِسِ So the Sheikh, he goes on to mention a few more uh, evidences here of which one of them was mentioned last week, Surah Al-Bayna verse 5. And if you remember, Surah Al-Bayna verse 5, and they were commanded not but that they should worship Allah and worship none but Him alone, abstaining from ascribing partners to Him and perform a salat, ikamat salat and give zakat. And that is the right religion. So that's the whole ayah. And then the other ayah from Surah to zumar verse 2. Surah to zumar verse 3, sorry. And it's right at the start of this ayah. Surely the religion, i.e. the worship and the obedience is for Allah only. Clear. That's clear as day. So then the Shaykh... He goes on to say, قَالَ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ أَشِرْكُ فِي إِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ وَعَرَفْنَا عَيْدًا مَعْنَ الْإِبَادَةَ وَأَنَّ اسْمُ جَامِعْ لِكُلِّ مَا يُحِبُّهُ اللَّهُ وَيَرْضَاهُ مِنَ الْأَقْوَالِ وَالْأَعْمَالِ الظَّاهِرَةِ وَالْبَاطِنَةِ وَالْإِبَادَةُ بِكُلِّ أَصْنَافِهَا وَجَمِيعَ أَنْوَائِهَا وَأَفْرَادِهَا حَقٌّ لِلَّهِ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ فقد فقد أشرك بالله العظيم واتخذ مع الله سبحانه وتعالى الأنداد والشركاء وقد قال الله عز وجل فلا تجعلوا لله أندادا وأنتم تعلمون أي لا تجعلوا لله شركاء في العبادة وأنتم تعلمون أنه لا خالق لكم غير الله سبحانه وتعالى. so then the sheikh goes on to say says and he رحم الله said as in the original author said, ashirku fi ibadatillah. And uh, committing shirk or sourcing partners uh, in, uh, um, in the worship with, with Allah, alongside Allah. And the Shaykh says, and we know also the meaning of worship. As the previous lesson, whoever was there or whoever has listened to the previous lesson, the Shaykh had defined uh, and gave us a definition, an all-encompassing definition of what worship means. And he reminds us here, he says, and that it is an, an all-encompassing term, an all-encompassing uh, term where whatever you do from your speech, your actions, whether they are hidden inside or they are outward and apparent, that if Allah is pleased with it, then it counts as worship. 
If Allah is pleased with it, if it pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it's counted as worship. With, from all of its angles, from all of those angles, and of all of its types, it is, uh, it is the, a right, it's the right of Allah, and none else can partake in that. All of that is a right of Allah. That worship is a right of Allah and not the right of anything else. Yeah, it's a right of the Creator. Yeah. So whoever takes away any type of worship away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and directs it to anywhere else, it could be any type of worship, small or big, whatever. Any type of worship, if it if it is channeled away to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then that is worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and committing shirk. It doesn't matter who you do to it. If it goes to, if that, if any type of worship, any part of your worship, it goes to anything other than Allah, you've committed shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a major crime, a big crime. As mentioned, as the Sheikh explained to us earlier. And what you're doing in actual fact is setting up rivals and partners alongside Allah. You're bringing other people to the same level of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In actual, in reality, that's what's happening. And the Shaykh says, وَقَدْ قَالَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ فَلَا تَجَعْلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادٌ وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Now this is a well-known ayah as well from Surah Al-Baqarah verse 22. And, don't, and do not create alongside Allah rivals and, and you know. Meaning that you know. That there's no creator other than Allah. Allah is the creator of everything. And knowing that, by and by knowing that, you are setting rivals up alongside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and committing shirk. Yeah? So this is what the ayah means as the shaykh explained just after it. So the shaykh, he goes on to tell us and inform us, he says, وَقَدْ ذَكَرُ الشَّيْخِ رحمه الله تعالى في التحذير من الشرك وبيان سوء مغبته وعدم عقوبته عند الله سبحانه وتعالى دليلين من القرآن الكريم. So the Sheikh says here, he says, as the original author, may Allah have mercy upon him, has warned us about shirk and clarified it to us. And clarified its, uh, its, um, how would you put it, illogical. And he's clarified to it, it, he's clarified this to us that it is illogical with regards to the evidences that we've looked at. That you associate partners with Allah in worship knowing, knowing that Allah is the sole and only creator of everything. Yeah, and the Sheikh says there's two evidences from the Quran, from the noble Quran that he's going to mention with regards to this. He says, Al Awalu, Qawl Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi mawdi'ayni min surat al nisa, inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bih. Athani, Qawl Allah azza wa jal, inna hu man yushrik billahi faqad haram Allahu alayhi al jannata wa ma'wahu al nar wa ma. So the first of the evidences the Shaykh he brings to us, he says, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in two parts of, or in two places in Surah An-Nisa, where this ayah, this is mentioned, in Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bih, and mentioned earlier, same ayah, mentioned earlier, verily Allah does not forgive that you set up partners, Alongside him in worship, yeah, shirk. And second, the second uh, uh, evidence where Allah Azza wa Jal He says, "Inna hu man yushrik man yushrik billahi fakad haram Allahu alayhi al jannah wa ma wahun wa ma wahun nar wa ma li zalimina min ansar." And that was mentioned earlier on as well. That's Surah Al Maidah, verse seventy-two. So if you need to refer back to it, please refer back to it, please. So we'll carry on. The Sheikh goes on to say. اقتصر رحمه الله على ذكر هذين الدليلين لأن لأن هذه الرسالة مقتصرة في بيان النواقض وليس وليس الموضع فيها موضع موضع 
بسط بسط وتفصيل موضعي بسط وتفصيل وإلا فإن الآيات التي في القرآن التي ذكر فيها الشرك وبينت عقوبات وبينت عقوباته وحذر منه وبين سوء مالي سوء مآل أهله في دنياهم وأخراهم كثيرة تتجاوز المئة والخمسين آية آية في كتاب الله تبارك وتعالى. So the Sheikh he mentions gives some benefits. He says that the original author may Allah have mercy upon him. He just uh, mentioned these two evidences only for the reason of clarifying um, this um, nullifier. And it isn't uh, from the point of view that if he's only mentioned these two, it's because these are the only two evidences that exist for what we're talking about today. No, there was just a clarify to us. Here's a couple of evidences. That's enough for us from the Quran. And we've had evidences from the Sunnah that suffices. However, the Sheikh says that there are more than 150 ayat of the Quran, verses of the Quran, where this particular topic is being discussed about shirk. And so the Sheikh has only given us two just so we can understand it, have understanding of it, and then move on to the next point. Yeah. So the Sheikh continues. He says, "Well, ayat al-ula al-ula alati zakar al-musannif, rahmahullah taala, wa hi qawl Allah azza wa jal. Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushrak bihi wa yaghfiru ma dun dalik li man yasha. Fiha aadam tahdir wa ashad zajr wa nahi an al-shirk billah. Inna Allah azza wa jal tawaada fi hadi al-ayat al-mushrik bihi aladi." به الذي مات على الشرك بالله أنه لا 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 يغفر له وأن المشرك الذي يلقى يلقى الله يوم يلقى الله يوم يوم القيامة مشركا لا مطمع له يوم القيامة في مغفرة الله ولا سبيل له إلى نيل رحمة الله سبحانه وتعالى لأن الله عز وجل حرم رحمته ومغفرته على الكافرين وهذا توعد مقيد في هذه الآية بالإشراك به خصص هذا هذا الذنب وقيد المغفرة قال إن الله لا لا يغفر أن يشرك به خص هناك الشرك من بين الذنوب قال إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك به يذكر يذكر مع الشرك الذنوب الأخرى. So let's just stop there for a second while I translate. Inshallah, and I will carry on so there isn't too much of a delay between the Arabic and the translation. So the Sheikh he goes on to explain. So the first evidence, the first ayah, that was the first evidence given to us. And the author, may Allah have mercy upon him, mentioned, he said, he mentioned the speech of Allah. Verily, Allah does not forgive that you set up rivals and partners alongside him in worship. However, he forgives to who he wills other than that. And so, the Shaykh, he continues, he says, this is the greatest warning and the sternest warning and uh, and us being, you know, being made that this action is being for, made forbidden, i.e. shirk. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the greatest example that from this ayah when we read it and we understand it. That shirk is the greatest thing that Allah has forbidden us from. And it's the greatest warning that Allah has given us with regard to shirk. Yeah. And so the shaykh he says that Allah has warned us and threatened us. That has threatened the mushrik, the one who commits shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship. That if he dies upon this state of shirk, polytheism, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he will not be forgiven. He will not be forgiven. And that this polytheist, when he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the, on the day of judgment, on the day of reckoning, as a, as a polytheist, he will not taste on the day of judgment Allah's mercy. 
or Allah's forgiveness. And there is no way for him to obtain Allah's mercy on that day. Because Allah Azza wa Jal has made it, has made his, um, has forbade or made his mercy haram and his uh, forgiveness haram upon the disbelievers. And this is a threat that is spec specified and around this ayah with regards to shirk. It's been specified, this sin has been specified, i.e. shirk, and it's, and this maghfira, this, um, the uh, forgiveness, it's, the person is blocked from that forgiveness if he dies in a state of polytheism. And the Sheikh, he goes on to say, he mentions the ayah again as we did in Arabic. And then he mentions, he says here that because he says the shirk here uh, uh, with regards to the uh, sins that shirk is mentioned here. And, uh, and as Allah mentioned, he does not forgive uh, uh, his creation committing uh, polytheism here yeah? and say no partners and rivals alongside him in worship. So then the Sheikh continues and he says, يُذْكَرْ مَا شِرْكَ ذُنُوبَ الْأُخْرَى وَإِنَّمَا خُصَّ الشِرْكُ وَحْدَهُ بِالذِّكْرِ مِنْ بَيْنِ سَائِرَ الْذُنُوبِ قَالَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ, وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَا يَشَاءُ So then the Sheikh mentions that, that you can see that shirk as a sin has been mentioned here and that there's no forgiveness for the one who dies upon a state of polytheism. But other than that, the rest of the sins have not been mentioned in the same ayah but it's been mentioned in a general way that Allah forgives anything other than shirk to whoever he wants to forgive yeah from his wisdom so then the shaykh continues he says لَمَّا خُصِّسَ مِنَ الظُّنُوبِ ذَنْبَ الشِّرْكِ بِأَنَّهُ لَا يُغْفَرْ قُيِّدَ فِي الْآيَةِ الْمَغْفِرَةِ بِمَنْ يَشَاء بِمَنْ يَشَاء قَالَ وَيَغْفِرُ دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاء as we mentioned, the Sheikh just mentioned what was mentioned earlier. And the Sheikh goes on to say, وَالْمُرَادْ بِذَلِكَ أَيْ مَنْ لَقَوْ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ الَّذِينَ يَلْقَوْنَهُ بِالشِّرْكِ وَالَّذِينَ يَلْقَوْنَهُ بِذُنُوبَ الْأُخْرَى أَخْبَرَ جَلَّ وَعَلَى أَنَّ مَنْ يَلْقَاهُ بِالشِّرْكِ لَا يَغْفِرُ لَهُ وَمَنْ يَلْقَاهُ بِغَيْرِ شِرْكِ بِذُنُوبَ الَّتِي هِيَ so then the Sheikh mentions here, as we can see, that whoever meets Allah in a state of polytheism, Allah will not forgive them. They will not be forgiven. But whoever meets Allah with sins other than polytheism, other than shirk, then Allah will forgive whoever he wills. And the Sheikh goes away, Al-amru fi hala al-ladhina laqu allaha subhanahu wa ta'ala fi dhunubin dun shirk bihi tahta mashiyatillah. So then the shaykh goes on to say and explain a bit further that those people that have not committed shirk but meet Allah on that day with sins, then Allah will either forgive them or he will punish them. Whatever Allah wills. And if they are punished, the shaykh goes on to say, وَإِنْ عَذَبَهُمْ لَا يُخَلِّدُهُمْ فِي النَّارِ لِأَنَّهُ لَا يُخَلِّدُ فِي النَّارِ إِلَّا الْمُشْرِكِ بِاللَّهِ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى وَلِهَذَا يَجِبُ أَنْ نَعْلَمَ أَنَّ هَذِهِ الْآيَةَ الْكَرِيمَةَ مِنْ سُورَةِ النِّسَاءِ فِي حَقِّ بَنْ مَاتَ عَلَى الشِّرْكِ بِلَيْهِ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى So then the Sheikh says, so whoever is punished in the hellfire for whatever sins that they had other than shirk, then Allah won't put them in the hellfire forever. And rather, it will just be for purification. So depending on the sins that the person is being punished for, depending on their brevity, gravity, magnitude, for example, then uh, the greater the sins are and the greater sins are piled up and mounted up, then the longer it will take to purify. So it's not forever, but it will be placed in there, uh, in the hellfire for purification. And the Sheikh mentions here that, that oh, it's only the mushrik and the disbeliever that ends up in hellfire forever. But other than that, you die in the state of Islam, you may have, have some sins. Allah decides to punish us, for example. Then it's for a certain period of time. <clears throat> and 
the Sheikh goes on to say, وَلِهَذَا يَجِبُ أَنْ نَعْلَمَ أَنَّ هَذِي الْآيَةِ الْكَرِيمَةِ مِنْ سُورَةِ النِّسَاءِ فِي حَقِّ مُمَّاتَ عَلَى الشِّرْكِ بِاللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى So also we need to make sure we understand what the Sheikh has said today uh, during this lesson. And that is that this ayah that we've read with regards to shirk, verily Allah does not forgive that you set up partners and rivals alongside him in worship, but he forgives whatever else to whoever he wills, whatever other sins that they commit. The persons commit uh, to whoever he wills. That with this ayah is referring to the person who dies upon polytheism. If you realized, or somebody realized, or somebody you warned someone else, oh, you're committing polytheism, you're committing shit, what are you doing? And they realize, they accept the evidence and they ask Allah for forgiveness and never turn to that again, then this person is forgiven. But so this ayah is referring to the person who has died upon shirk. If they die upon shirk, that's it. This ayah is referring to them. Yeah. So then the Shaykh goes on to say, and he says, why? Here's evidence why. He says, here's evidence why from a, another part of the Quran, from Surah Al-Zumar, I think. Yeah, Surah Al-Zumar, verse 53. The Shaykh says, وَلِهَذَا لَيْسَ بَيْنَ هَذِي الْآيَةِ الْكَرِيمَةِ وَقُولُ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ فِي سُورَةِ الزُّمَرِ قُلْ يَا إِبَادِ قُلْ يَا إِبَادِ يَلَّذِينَ أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الظُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ قَوْلُهُ جَمِيعًا يَدْخُلْ فِي ذَلِكَ يَدْخُلْ فِي ذَلِكَ الشِّرْكِ بِلَيْهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ أَوْ لَا يَدْخُلْ So the Shaykh, he mentions this ayah and I'm sure we're aware of this ayah as well but let's go to the translation for Surah Zumar verse 53 Say, O oh my slaves who have transgressed against themselves by committing evil deeds and sins, despair not of the mercy of Allah. Verily, Allah forgives all sins. Truly, He is oft forgiving, most merciful. So the Shaykh, he says, now looking at this ayah, now and comparing it with the other one that we were reading earlier on and the Shaykh was discussing and explaining to us. He says, does shirk come into this ayah that we just read now? Does shirk come into this ayah or does it not? And he says to us that it does because, because Allah mentioned that Allah forgives all sins, every sin. And it's it's generalized. It's all sins. And so the shaykh, he explains here that the, the how do we understand these two ayahs and how do we differentiate between them? The first one, as he mentioned, is to do with the person who dies upon polytheism. And this, the second ayah that we just read now on the translation of the meanings of the ayah, that that's referring to people who are still alive and still breathing. And that if they realize what they're doing or somebody else warns them and guides them and brings them the evidences and they realize the wrongs that they are upon, as in polytheism, and they ask Allah for forgiveness, you know, a true forgiveness, and they ask for forgiveness and Allah forgives them while they're alive and that they don't turn back to it. Yeah. This is what the Shaykh explains in this paragraph. So the Shaykh, he goes on to say, دَاخِلُوا فِي قَوْلِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ ذُنُوبَ جُمِيعَ أَيْ بِمَا فِيهَا الْإِشْرَاقِ بِلَيْهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى He goes on to say, he says, what we mentioned earlier, and he says the answer to this is, he goes on to say, الجواب لِأَنَّ آيَةَ الزُّمَرْ فِي حَقِّ مِنْ تَاب And what's the evidence? He says evidence that the ayah in Surah Al-Zumar that we just read, it's it's in it's with regard to uh, uh, the person who has has asked for forgiveness, who has sought forgiveness. Yeah, and he says the ayah from Surah An Nisa, the first one that we read, that's with regard to the person who has passed away, has died, right? And then he goes on to say, "Man mata ala shirk wa mata ala dunub aladi yamutu ala shirki la yufr lah." وَالَّذِي يَمُوتُ عَلَى الْمَعْصِ تَحْتَ مَشِيَةِ اللَّهِ إِنْ شَاءَ عَظَّبَ وَإِنْ شَاءَ غَفَرَ لَيْسَ الْمُرَادُ فِي لَيْسَ الْمُرَادُ فِي آيَةِ النِّسَاءِ مَنْ تَابَ لِأَنَّ مَنْ تَابَ مِنْ الشِّرْكِ أَوْ مِنْ غَيْرِهِ تَابَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ بِدُونِ بِدُونِ أَنْ يُقَيِّدَ الْأَمْرَ بِالْمَشِيَّةِ مَنْ تَابَ تَابَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَلِهَذَا لَمَّا ذَكَرَ فِي آيَةِ الزُّمَرِ مَقَامَ التَّوْبَةِ إِلَيْهِ قَالَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا so an extra benefit the Shaykh mentioned here, he says that how do we also understand this is that whoever seeks forgiveness, Allah forgives him. Whoever asks Allah for forgiveness, Allah forgives him. Right? But if somebody dies, their actions are cut off. Their 
actions are cut off and they can't ask for forgiveness. So that makes, that helps us to understand further that the first ayah from, uh, was it from Surah to An-Nisa, from Surah to nisa is to do with the person who's died. Yeah. And the Surah to the ayah from Surah to Zumar, which is the recent one that we read, that's to do with the person who's still alive. Yeah. Who's still alive and who asks Allah forgiveness. Allah forgives whoever Allah, whoever asks Allah forgiveness, he forgives them. And obviously there's a, I think in a previous book that we studied, there was conditions mentioned regarding um, uh, an honest uh, repentance. It's not like, oh, I'm going to do this sin and then I'll ask Allah for forgiveness and then I'll carry on doing it another day and then I'll ask him for forgiveness. No, it doesn't work like that. You have to ask Allah for forgiveness and be honest in your repentance and, you know, feel regret for what you did and stay away from doing those actions and trying your best to stay away from those actions. Right? So then the Shaykh continues, he says, mm-hmm. So that's just what's already mentioned. Yeah. So we have another five minutes. We'll finish by the red highlighted text is so we don't have much to go. So bear with me, inshallah, for another five minutes or so. So the Shaykh he says, وَدَلِيلُ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ الْمُرَادْ بِقَوْلِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ ذُنُوبَ جَمِيعًا أي مَنْ مَاتَ عَلَىٰ ذَلِكَ الدَّلِيلُ عَلَىٰ ذَلِكَ قَوْلُهُ لَا تَقْنَةُ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ وَهَذَا الْخِطَابِ لَا يَتَوَجَّهْ إِلَىٰ مَنْ مَاتَ بِذُنُوبِ وَمَعَصِي وَإِنَّمَا يَتَوَجَّهْ هَذَا الْخِطَابِ لِلْحَيِّ الْمُكَلَّفِ الْمُخَاطِبِ بِالتَّكَالِيفِ يُقَالَ لَهُ لَا تَقْنُتْ Also the Shaykh brings a new evidence for us or a new point to ponder over. He says in the ayah from Surah Zumar where we where, where mentioned in Allah la yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a and then the other part of it la taqnatu min rahmatillah the shaykh says how do we understand this as well from another angle he says that Allah says la taqnatu don't despair yeah don't despair and he says that this isn't said to a person who has died who was died upon sins and disobediences Rather, it is being directed. It's, 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 when you say to somebody, don't despair, you're directing it to somebody who is alive, somebody who's actually being spoken to, somebody who is still, uh, obligated by the Sharia of Allah to uh, discharge his duties in accordance to the, uh, Islamic legislation. And they said to him, La taqnut, don't despair, i.e., meaning, you know, don't despair, i.e., you know, uh, Turn to Allah and repent to Him. And repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and do things to seek nearness to Him. Do good deeds. Do all kinds of good deeds and seek nearness to Him. And regret the bad actions that you did. Be regretful of what you did. Be remorseful of what you did. And stay away from those things that which you used to do. Yeah? In terms of the sins of course. And then the Shaykh mentions again, لا تقنتو من رحمة الله Yeah, same, same part of the ayah. أي توبوا إلى الله فإنه سبحانه وتعالى يغفر الذنوب جميعا أي لا يتعاظم ذنب أن يغفر مهما عظم الذنب ومهما كبر الجرم فإنه سبحانه وتعالى لا, لا يتعاظم ذنب أن يغفر فهو, الغ... فهو الغفور الرحيم يغفر الذنوب جميعا مهما كثرت وتعددت وامتدت من حيث المساحة التاريخية والزمنية ومهما غلظت وعظم وعظمت وكبرت يغفر الذنوب جميعا أي في حق التائبين إلى الله فمن تاب وصدق مع الله سبحانه وتعالى في توبته مح الله عنه ذنوبه وغفر الله سيئاته uh, ولو كانت شركا كفرا زندقا الحادا اجراما مهما كان قال الله تعالى والذين لا يد لا يدعون مع الله الها اخر ولا يقتلون الناس uh, النفس التي حرم الله الا بالحق ولا يزنون so we'll stop there inshallah so let me just translate this uh, these few lines and then we'll, we'll conclude inshallah so the sheikh he says here just to summarize he says that that Allah, while we're alive, Allah forgives all sins, those people who turn to Him in repentance and ask for forgiveness and don't return to those sins and stay away from those sins. And the Sheikh mentions here, 
whether they're big or small, whether it's been over a long period of time or a short period of time. You know, it doesn't matter how many sins you've done and how small you've done. Allah uh, will forgive uh, all sins. Allah forgives all sins, so don't ever despair. You know, some people you hear them say, you know, they come and talk to you and they seek advice from you, for example, and, and they'll say, you know, I've been a bad person. You know, I've been upon a sinful life. There's no, there's no refuge for me. But that's not true. Because as we've learned, as you can see, the evidence is what Allah has said in his book. Allah forgives all sins while you're alive. So there's always a chance to redeem yourself. But you have to be honest in your repentance. And this is what the Sheikh is saying. It doesn't matter whether you committed shirk or kufr, disbelief or heresies or um, uh, uh, fall into atheism or crimes or whatever they may be. If you turn to Allah in repentance and go far away from them and avoid those sins and stay away from them, then Allah will forgive you while you're alive, of course. The Sheikh mentions an ayah, but inshallah, we'll go through uh, the... The uh, that inshallah next week, and uh, we're reaching about 45 minutes now, so inshallah, I think that should suffice for now. Jazakumullah khair. So, inshallah, we'll see you uh, for next week's lesson at the same time. Inshallah, subhanakullahumma wa bihamdika shadu an la ilaha illa ant wa staghfiruka wa tubi laik wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.